I thank you very much for this great honor and privilege to participate in today's uh, fifth armory series, which is a very, very important uh, topic. And as Dr. Rajshrekhan knows, uh, has already elaborated, everyone knows about it, but uh, it is a strict following. And I think as surgeons, we should have certain fundamentals clear so that when it comes to uh, seeing things and looking at our staff, we should be able to pinpoint deficiencies as the team leaders. So cleaning is the removal of the dust. Killing of vegetative organisms is decontamination, but all microorganisms being killed, including spores, is sterilization. So when we are talking of sterilization, all spores have also to be killed. Now, these are two words very inter interchange very frequently, sterilization and autoclave. Now, autoclave basically is the device that is used to sterilize equipment by subjecting the instruments to <coughs> a very high pressure saturated steam at 121 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. And the amount of time would depend on the size of the load and the contents that we are sterilizing. A student of Louis Pasteur, Charles Chamberlain, devised this first um, autoclave. And we have gone a long way from there to the very recent models of sterilization. And we sterilize to kill all microorganisms, to prevent cross infection, and to protect personnel and patients. This is what we had seen as children also, but this is not sterilization. And this is not the right procedure, that everything dumped at one place, and then you sit down to clean it. So the process by which a medical device is freed from viable microorganisms, including spores, is what we will see. Now, sterilization or autoclaving is just a part of it. One has to limit and lower the bio burden before sterilization. And then you have to prepare adequately and appropriately. Then you have to select the correct sterilization parameters because different, um, different equipment require different parameters. And one has to implement controls to maintain the sterility of these items till they are used. So, the magic figure that we want to know is 134 degrees at which the spores die in wet heat. And we'll come to the time control in a minute. All these autoclaves or the sterilizing machines depend on the, on the relationship or the inter, interrelationship of pressure, temperature, and time. And if we have a pressure of one bar, then the, then the water will boil at 120 degrees. And if we can increase it to two bars, then the water would boil at 134 degrees, giving rise to saturated steam. Now, if we are, if we are holding the equipment for three minutes at 134 degrees, all spores die. And if we are having a temperature of 124 degrees for 15 minutes. So that gives us the amount of time that we have to hold at a particular temperature. The methods of sterilization, either we have dry or wet heat, or we have chemical um, reactions with plasma, which is low temperature or ethylene oxide. Various other methods of Sterilization include vapors and liquids, dry heat, gases, radiation, but today steam, that is saturated steam, which autoclaves or sterilizes stainless steel, glass, and whatever it can handle. So we'll look at these one by one. For the vapors and liquids, they are not very commonly used because they have the, the equipment has to be cleaned after it has been sterilized with sterile material. 
plus if we are using any vapor form like we used to have these uh, these um, plastic boxes in this manner with trays inside the problem about the vapors and the toxicity caused was quite frequent now when we talk of heat heat kills by kill, kills the living organism by two ways coagulation or oxidation and the difference so if you put an egg inside boiling water at 52 degrees coagulation takes place and what you get is a boiled egg but now if you fry an egg at a much higher temperature the sides start blackening up and this is called oxidation so heat kills the organism either by coagulation or by oxidation but the most common methods of course today are steam under pressure the older methods included and this many times in the operation theater um, we used to do it i think uh, most of the older generation surgeons would remember that put some spirit um, and uh, ignite it and have the instrument that is uh, um, uh, sterilized. And the dry heat sterilization is used mainly for glass, stainless steel, and a few other materials. The temperature that the item should be able to withstand has to be higher, and you cannot wrap it in cloth, it has to be wrapped, wrapped in an aluminum foil. The most common method today is the wet sterilization, which basically is steam that goes through the hollow parts and inside various devices of your packing material. And this is uh, when the steam is heated, um, the bacteria are killed. The basic principle, so there is a there is some water which is heated that goes in the form of a steam and this is controlled once the pressure of 134 degrees is uh, is got um, is achieved um, about three to four minutes is more than adequate if a lower temperature of 121 122 degrees then 10 to 15 minutes now all these systems have become automatic so the manual factor of someone trying to rush to a surgeon in the theater said, Jaldi karo! and the person starts opening up the gasket, those days are now virtually going to go away. Gas sterilization. So from heat, we come to gas. And today, the most popular one is the ETO. Uh, and that is the reason basically is the cost factor. But it is explosive and carcinogenic and requires extensive safety precautions. It penetrates best and is very, very uh, commonly used today. Gamma irradiation or gamma sterilization is best suited for very high volumes. And usually hospitals of most sizes would not be uh, using gamma ray irradiation. The newer techniques include flash sterilization, plasma sterilization, and ethylene dioxide. Now, Flash sterilization is again a steam sterilization. There is no drying time. There is no storage time. And the process is either gravity or, um, or uh, dynamic removal of the vacuum. Now, there are five steps that everyone must remember and make sure it's enforced in your theaters so that if you are doing flash for any reason, then you are uh, you are not missing the mark of sterilization. Number one, there are no shortcuts to, to decontaminate. So it's not just that you uh, wipe up an instrument and put it in flash. It has to be decontaminated meticulously. The equipment should be exposed such that all the parts of the instrument are exposed to the steam. Say, for example, there is an artery or a needle holder. One must open up the catch completely so that the steam gets direct entry into the, into the uh, narrow areas. Do not forget to put the indicator uh, inside the um, flash so that when the process is finished, you check the indicator that you have achieved uh, sterilization, that the appropriate uh, temperature has changed the color of the indicator. After confirming the flash sterilization, parameter settings, 
one must confirm the sterilizing test, ensure proper transfer to the sterile area. So from the uh, flash autoclave into the operating field, this carriage also should be done with gown gloves and it should not be taken lightly. Finally, document everything that you have done and especially the parameters and the indicators. Now, it cannot be used in a flash, cannot be used in a package or a sterile uh, or sterilized, uh, it cannot be stored before you. So that's one aspect of it. And it is only to be used when there is insufficient time to sterilize an item. One must avoid using um, um, implants um, which have been flashed into, uh, into inserted into the body. Um, it is not recommended that implants be flashed. Then we come to plasma sterilization where we have got free ions, um, positive ions, negative ions and neutral ions. And um, this works by three mechanisms. So the infrared basically, it vaporizes the microbiological matter and it causes physical destruction of the spores. So it is a very effective way, but the disadvantages of plasma sterilization is it has very weak penetrating power. So it, it complications can arise if, there is a, uh, if the packaging material is very heavy and in complex geometries also, it has a very weak penetrating powers. There are four types of sterilization cycles run in an autoclave. Uh, general requirement cycle, class B cycle, class N cycle, and class S cycle. We usually use the class B cycle, which is a big sterilizer, which means that all kinds of medical devices can be sterilized, including grime. So this includes grime. Now, these are a few videos that I am going to uh, show. So one has to be very careful about the fire precautions in this area. So here we have got, um, it is a very well uh, labeled situation. Now we go into my decontamination room. So if you have a look, there, is, there are two types of water, the plain water and the RO water with a water gun and an air gun to clean. And now you would see that this is, after the instrument is cleaned in a dryer, it is, they are washed under pressure. And this is a separate area where the mops are also not going into the sterile area. So this is basically an unsterile area where an ultrasonic machine has, is being used to clean the instruments. Now there are various solutions used for disinfection. So one has to use detergent initially, but where there is organic waste of previously uh, operated patients, enzymatic cleaners should be used very meticulously. One uses a water gun initially to to sort of a, a jet of water is used to clean and then especially with the hollow instruments like reamers, like candulated drills, the air gun is used to clean the whole thing. Now I'm taking you to the linen room. Now in the linen room, you will see this is an LED light that is checking for the gowns that, are, that, have, that have got holes inside. So this gown will be discarded. This linen will be discarded. And then we go to the assembly area. Now this is all the part of the linen room. Here, one must not load everything uh, as a jumble. It has to be done very meticulously for the horizontal autoclaves. Again, there should be space between the uh, between the um, uh, packaged implants and of course um, everything is double wrapped now we come to this um, we come to the sterile uh, room and if you will see here this is the area where everything is stored 
This is the other part of the autoclave from where the autoclaving is taking place. And this sterile room also has microfiltered air that comes. So all the implants, instruments, all the sterile material is kept in a sterile environment. Finally, these trolleys and everything is packed uh, on a sterile trolley. Now, at the time of autoclaving, before the first cycle, a pre-sterilization and a post-sterilization bovidic test is conducted to make sure that the autoclave is working well. A leak test is also done. There are various indicators of sterilization, biological and chemical. Now, the biological uh, indicator, as you will see, there are two shown here, one below and one above. And the color changes um, from uh, yellow on the left-hand side to dark blue on the other side out, out of the outer clip. Similarly, biological indicators are also used. Now, the very important thing is documenting it. So a autoclave register with a printout should be well maintained. Similarly, the bovidic register with a printout and a PCD file is maintained. The ETO is also maintained with a printout. And you would see that all this is documented on for every single patient. Now, these are the heroes of the background. They need to be encouraged very, very frequently. Otherwise, they could be very depressed doing their work. If, if you don't look after them, they can start compromising because integrity of the CSCP team is extremely vital. One small neglect. There's many a slip between the cup and the lip. And for sterilization, every single thing Every single step is important. One should not rush in. So to summarize, sterilization is killing of all microorganisms. Wet heat of about 134 degrees for two minutes. And if it is 125 degrees or 121 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes, the most common method of sterilization is steam. Flash sterilization is recommended instruments but not recommended for implantable devices. Ethylene of dioxide and plasma sterilization are other common methods. The surgeon should keep a check of the indicators and keep the, pay, the staff on guard. Remember, cleaning is very important. The best of sterilizers is not going to give you 100% result if disinfection is not done thoroughly. You need a dedicated team with integrity. I think this is a team that does not run into the theater to assist at the time of assistant, gets up in the morning at three, runs an above test, because if they are tired, then they try to cut corners. Check that all the protocols are followed and regular maintenance of equipment is very vital. Thank you very much.